So paper number two, GCSE Maths is now complete. And I've got to say, the level of confidence that students were coming out of that exam with, you truly deserve this. Especially given how paper number one went for some of you guys, how it threw you off with the number of five markers and also the amount of questions that were on the paper that some of you didn't expect. And if you wanna see that video review, which I've done on that, then you can click right here and it should take you straight to that video. So in this video, I'll be looking specifically at GCSE Maths Edexcel paper number two. People are saying things like how much easier it was than paper number one, that they felt happy about it. They were saying that there was only three hard questions at the end. And in fact, one of my students actually said to me that those three hard questions were fun. I don't know what he meant by that. So we're gonna be taking a look at that as well. And so many of you guys were saying that it felt like a proper Edexcel paper once again. If you're feeling good about this paper, good, enjoy it. You deserve this, you earn this. But this could also have some implication for paper number three, which we'll be looking at later on in this video. But before we do that, let's look at the paper. This is the first time that I'm gonna be looking at the paper, so let's go. So the very first question, what do we have here? Lovely, that's nice you know, LCM prime factor questions. Number two, oh, that's such a lovely ratio question. The good old ratio questions. Wow, I love that. Number three, we've got a triangle inside a circle. That's nice. I mean, you should be well equipped for this one now, guys. The amount of questions that we've been answering with this type over the last few years, you should be right up your alley. Right, number four. Really? That looks so straightforward. That's a good one. That's a nice one. Look, I know that lots of you guys will be looking at these a uh, question and thinking, I disagree. It was a hard paper. In fact, I did have a student say that on one of the comments. But look, you've got to ask yourself how much work, how much preparation you've done for this. Because the same thing, two different students can look at it in two different ways. One student has prepared for this and the student who hasn't prepared for it. Of course, if you haven't prepared for this, then of course it's going to be hard for you. But if you have prepared, you have been revising all these months, then this is good so far. It really is. Right, let's keep going. Number six. So this looks like the first bit of challenge that some people may think, okay, be of, be outside the ordinary. Now I know that so far, all these questions would also be on the foundation paper. So the foundation students, this will be at the end of your paper. And this one particular question, question six on the higher, I think later on in the foundation, finding the mean and it's got some ratio, a little bit outside the ordinary, but nothing too tricky. Although the number of marks may frighten some students off that one. But let's keep going. Wow, number seven, a straightforward, you know, right angle triangle using trigonometry. Lovely question, picking up easy marks there. Then you've got the density question. Looks great, so mechanical so far, guys. Right, number nine. This you might need to expand out and then just read the values off from initial inspection. Remember, I'm not going to be going too deep into these questions, just generally looking at it. Number 10, I knew we were gonna get one of these, solving algebraic fractions. I knew we would do one of these, especially uh, from the last year where there wasn't much of that. So great to see that there now, and it's nice and mechanical to do. We've got a probability tree diagram. It's just a matter of putting the values in and working out the part B for this based on your tree, correct tree diagram. So that's a lovely question, lovely marks. Enough right now for, you know, people who are on uh, the middle ability to get their grade five. I think that's enough. There'll be plenty of marks there for them to work on. Then but th look at this, look at the next question, question 12. This is like box plot, simple box plot. And we, I'm glad I've been doing this with my students a lot, you know, working out the values, working out the interquartile range, those kind of things, you know, using those things uh, to find the highest value, lowest value, that kind of stuff. And that is a good question there. Five marks again though. One thing I'm noticing, the five markers are still at the beginning of the paper, not just crammed at the end. So they're still spread out. But the questions are nice, they're, they're nice questions. Number 13, we move on to, okay, triple bracket expansion. Very straightforward. If you've practiced that, this is a lovely question to do. Then number 14, we've got combinations. It looks like a combinations question. Number 15, inequalities. Wow, it's not much rearranging. Okay, one of them might need to be rearranged, but yeah, it's lovely. And one thing I've noticed with these uh, inequalities is they've taken away the equal to as well. You know, you don't have to worry about the dotted lines and things like that. So yeah, that's a great question for inequalities. It's got part B to it, which has only one mark. It's outside of your ordinary inequality question where you just put the lines in and shade in your region. There's a little part B here, which some people have to think about. There's only one mark though, whether you get that right or not, it doesn't take away too much 
if you got it wrong. Number 16 now, okay, so similar uh, shapes, areas and volumes, that kind of stuff, area ratio, length ratio, it seems to be that sort of question. So far, I feel that the paper is very friendly. And number six, uh, 17 here, uh, what do we have? Two marks, got to find the value of K, passes through these coordinates. Okay, we've been given, so it's just some substituting values. For number 18, we seem to have some iteration questions. That's great. It's a nice straightforward iteration question. I've actually seen some of this appear on a few people's uh, predicted papers. So if you've done those predicted papers, it's a nice question to do. Okay, so number 19 now. Wow, that's a lovely question too. Oh, I, I know you're gonna hate me for this. You're gonna think, he's just saying everything's nice. He's just a maths teacher. You know, he can do these questions. For us, we struggle. I'm looking at the topic. I'm looking at where it's placed in the paper and I'm looking at the level of difficulty. Yeah, if you find that this kind of topic, 3D, Pythagoras, trigonometry difficult, then of course you're going to find it difficult. If you find it hard to visualize these triangles, you're going to find that difficult. But those of you who practice, those of you who know how to do this, you've done plenty of these questions with your teachers, that is so straightforward. 20 here. All right, so we've got some lines that intersect would be okay so this one you've got a bit of a show question to do here okay we've got some ratio involved so this is probably the first challenging question that people could really say okay this is tough right but if you're aiming for your grade eights and nines like that student who said it was fun to do then this is another fun one to do so i think you'll be okay there you'll be okay there and if you don't pick up full marks you'll be able to pick up a lot of the marks and then question 21, quadratic inequality. In fact, it's actually factorized for you. So it makes things even easier. And that's why there's only two marks associated with this. So that should be quite good. Hopefully you haven't forgotten to draw that, sketch that graph just to see if it's above the axis, below the axis, so you can see your range. A lot of students forget to do that. Uh, then we move on to question 22. We've got an equation of a circle, which we translate by this vector. And what do we have to do? Sketch it. So just follow the, follow a, you know, a center or something, see where the center's gone. Done, I suppose. Well, and the center's B. Yeah, so that's, that, that's nice. That's a transformation. Usually we get transformations of like sine graph or the cos graph, but here we're getting a translation or transformation, I should say, of, is a translation by the way, but transformations of a circle, which we've never had before. I can't remember one of those. Usually we get them, like I say, on the trig graphs. Anyway, moving on. That was a good question though. Question 23. No, see, I'm looking at this question, I'm thinking, that, surely that can't be here. So what do we have? We've got quadrilateral, we have to split it. Okay, maybe we have to split it and find this uh, angle A, B, C. The mechanics of it, straightforward, but then obviously dividing that by two, where you're going to place your division line. That's something that, you know, do you go down or do you go across? Something to decide. And I can already see what I would need to do for that. But I'm not going to be sharing it with you here, obviously. You have to wait next year for that. So, I mean, oh, that's it. That's the end of the paper. Look, I, I, I like the paper, if I'm honest with you. I like this paper, yes. Like my students said, that there were a few challenging questions at the end, but they were nice to do. I feel that. I feel that they were nice to do. Topics that didn't come up yet, uh, that so many of you guys may have worked towards, things like compound interest, maybe some reverse percentages. Um, we didn't see vectors. We didn't get those vectors in geometry, especially with those ratios. Now, my honest opinion, having spoken to some of my colleagues and my students, is I feel, I feel paper number three may be the one that contains the curveball question. You know, like the last few years, we've seen those kind of questions of circles and finding the perimeter and showing the proof or finding the area. We haven't had one of those questions that gets people talking about things. So that's something to prepare for paper number three. I honestly feel that just be cautious. I don't want to, you know, like dampen your celebratory spirits right now. Okay. But we need to be realistic and we need to prepare you. So paper number three, all the kind of topics that haven't come up yet, make sure you tick them off. Um, so that you can focus paper number three revision around those topics. And vectors in geometry is one of them, compound interest, circle theorems. Did we get much of that circle theorem? I don't think we got any uh, in paper one. So circle theorems, the proof of circle theorems, revise those kind of things. If you want, I'll be doing a video where I will be looking at those predicted topics for paper number three in a little bit more detail. Uh, let me know if you want that in the comments, uh, but just make sure you prepare. I think the first two papers, paper number one and paper number two, were really good. Um, 
students will be, hopefully if they prepared, will be on course to get their target grades. This is, was obviously my opinion. Some of you guys may share different opinions. Some of you may have found it difficult. Uh, do let me know how it went for you. My overall advice to you guys is not to get too relaxed. These first two papers have been great. The AQA students were saying that their paper number one was really easy and I don't know yet from them how their paper two was. So if you are an AQA student watching this, do let me know in the comments how your paper number two went for you guys. Excel students, just be aware that paper number three may throw that curveball. I could be wrong. Maybe it's going to follow the themes of this and this could be the best exam series year ever. And then 2026 students will get it all. You know, they'll get all the hard questions. I don't know. Let me know, guys, in the comments how this day went for you, whether you feel that you're going to go and get those grade eights and nines if you're aiming for those grades. If you're somebody who is a middle set student, did you feel that there were good questions there where you can pick up enough marks to get your target grades. And don't forget guys, one last thing, success in exams doesn't always define everything. Your life and how it pans out, this is just the beginning, all right? There's plenty more to come. In fact, on my second YouTube channel, Life School, go and check it out. Uh, this is for when you leave school, beyond the classroom, the lessons that you learn from there, where I talk a lot about how to build confidence in life, how to have a positive mindset, how to look at every situation, whether it's good or bad, and see the good in everything for yourself. Because at the end of the day, you are going to go through the journey of life. Adulting can be quite difficult. And this channel aims to help you with that. So do go and check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. I've just recently come back from a trek to Mount Everest base camp where I shared with you some of the lessons that I learned along the way. So after your exams, go and check out those three part vlogs that I've done on Everest and also other uh, travel vlogs that I've done where all I do is share lessons along the way because education is a lifelong journey. Until then guys, see you for paper number three. Goodbye for now.